Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Lucas and today I want to show you a little app that I built today using Xcode and using Cursor Composer. Uh, I didn't, I did not touch a single line of code, right? Um, and just use AI to basically build this app. Um, I'm screen recording my phone right now. And when I click on this app, basically we have this app called Pomo Notes that we created with, with my community in Discord. And basically what you do is you can create a new habit that you want to, uh, you know, have in your life. Like, uh, let's say we want to run five miles and run, jog and sweat, right? We can add this and then it's added here, right? These are the other habits that I have. I can delete them. And as you can see, it's like a standard uh, iOS UI that we have here. This is also something that we added to the knowledge base for the AI. And if we come here, we can take some extra notes, right? And we can go start timer and start this timer. And as you can see, it starts going to 25 minutes and basically like a Pomodoro technique, right? And then if we click on this right one, it ends and then we have a break time and then this ends again and then plays again and, and so on and so forth, right? So this is like a basically like a note taking habit tracker, Pomodoro technique app that we built in our community, right? And again, we built this in under an hour without any code. And in today's video, I want to show you how exactly we built this. All right. So the first thing that we want to do, obviously, is start off with Xcode, right? So Xcode, if you guys don't know, is this code editing software built by Apple to build iOS apps right? It runs on this coding language called Swift and you can find it in the app store in your desktop or in your MacBook, right? Um, actually, you can't use a Windows PC. You have to be using a MacBook uh, or something that runs on the macOS system. So what we can do right here, I have two different examples. What we can do is we can create a new project. And again, I mean, here, what you have to do is basically click up on iOS and app, click on next. And what you have to do here is basically, you know, edit the initial settings of your app, right? In this case, we needed a product name. We need to add a team. In this case, if you don't have a team, if this is completely fresh for you, I would go ahead and, you know, recommend that you add your uh, iCloud ID to this. And it's very easy. You can just go here and add it here. I have mine. And then the next thing, the third thing that we have to do is basically add our organization identifier. In this case, it's like a domain. If you are example.com, then you have to put com.example. Mine is prismato.io. So I'm going to put io.prismato. And then um, what you do is click on next. And you choose a place in your computer where you want to save this. In this case, I want to save it on my desktop. So, oh, actually, let's go cancel and let's change the name first. We can go ahead and call it something like habit tracker, right? Click on next and create. And we have it here created in our desktop. So that's fine. And now it's basically creating like this boilerplate that is standard for every Xcode app where you have your folders and files on the left panel. You have this uh, code view here. You have um, or a code editor, as I can say. We have this content view and we have here, which is basically has different functions, right? You can see the history. You can see kind of the identity and type and other functions that I didn't really use much, right? But this is kind of the important thing. And here we can change some things and say like, um, you know, goodbye world instead of hello world, goodbye world. And it basically syncs like this, right? So now we have it saved, synced. It says my name also, and it says the date that I was created. Super cool. Now what we want to do is we want to uh, actually build a habit tracker in this app. And we could, you know, do it with code. We can add new pages and stuff. But we want to we wanna do this with AI, right? So in this case, we're going to be using a tool called Cursor, right? So what we got to do is just click on Cursor. And once you land on Cursor, what you can do is open a project. And you can go to your, where did we save it? Somewhere here, Lucas Marjorie desktop. And there was this habit tracker, right? So we have the habit tracker here. You can click on open and we have this here. Let's just close it for now, but we can open certain things like this content view, 
right? And we see this goodbye world. So, right? So it's completely, it's like perfectly synced from, um, from Xcode here on cursor. So I'm going to put this a little bit in a larger screen like this so we can have a better view. And our next thing that we need to do now is basically add this AI function so it can start helping us code. In order to do that, what we have to do is go here on the top right, toggle AI panel, right? And we can click on this top one. We can just remove this. And when we, uh, there are specific functions that we can do. If, if we press on this forward slash, you can say it's reset context, disable iterate on lints, add open file. So there's different functions that you can add. Also, when you click on at, which is what we're going to need, there's abilities, abilities to add files and folders, to add code, to add docs, to add gits, pass chats, cursor rules, terminals, linter errors, and web, right? So these are different things that, that we can add. In this case, we're going to go ahead and add docs. And I've already added these in my, you know, because I, I built this together with my community not so long ago. But what we want to do first is we want to add certain things as a knowledge base so that cursor kind of understands what we're trying to build here. So I'm going to go to my Google Chrome and bring it over here and make this a little bit more full screen. Let's go like this. Boom. So we have a few things here. We have the Swift documentation, which is quite important to give to uh, the cursor composer so that it kind of understands the latest version of Swift and the UI design do's and don'ts, right? These are basically like, um, exactly, you can see here, but what, what, yeah, these are basically like the standard UI elements for designing Apple apps, right? In terms of uh, fonts, text sizings, contrast, spacing, um, images, distortion, organization, uh, different components, alignments, right? So it's important to add these two. Plus what you can also do is if you like a specific type of interface, let's say you like, um, let's say ChatGPT's interface, right? You can also add some certain types of screenshots into cursor and give that as a knowledge base as to how to kind of style your, your app, right? So let's go ahead and go back to uh, cursor and we can click on add like I was doing before you go to docs and I already have them here but just to show you add new doc you add the the, the the link so if I were to go back here go back here copy this and paste click on enter it basically creates a new name we can call this one swift confirm right and let's just close this and then we'll, we'll just do it again at docs and we want to add a new one and we go back to Chrome and we go like this and start from the beginning at docs, go back here, paste, enter Apple design, we can put like Apple design standards confirm. So we have Swift and Apple design standards. That's great. Now, if you want to add, add images that reference certain types of design styles, you can go here and add these images and you can just upload them from your computer. And the final thing that we want to do is actually add this at code base so that it kind of takes a look at the whole code base and not just one folder or file. And now what we can do is go ahead and start with the uh, with the prompt gener uh, creating a, a good prompt that cursor can kind of look at dissect and create something right so in this case i made it very simple i asked it to generate a prompt it said and it says i'd like to make an ios daily habit tr tracker that uses pomodoro technique the app will do th these things that uses create, edit, and delete daily habits with titles and optional descriptions for each habit allow users to start Pomodoro, Pomodoro timers, track Pomodoro sessions completed for each habit daily, and display progress visually. Uh, so we have a bunch of these different things, and what we can do is we can go back 
here and paste this like that. And what we can do is we can add kind of like a numbering like it was in ChatGPT. So it's all nice and organized. So there's about five or six, yeah, six different descriptions. And there was one about displaying something visually, display progress visually in, in a line graph, I would say. Um, so, and we can get, just get this and have user data locally save, not have, save, save user data locally in sync with iCloud available. So progress is not, okay. So what we can go ahead and do is click on, click on the magic button. So send or enter on your keyboard. And as it generates, you can start seeing that there are a few failures here, a few errors. So what we can do is just go here. So to complete this implementation, you'll need to add iCloud sync functionality using CloudKit. We won't really be doing that. Create views for habit details and note taking. Implement the progress visualization using Swift UI charts. Add local notifications for timer completions. Uh, create an, an onboarding flow. The app follows Apple's design guidelines by using Center. Would you like me to employ any specific part of these remaining components next? So what we can do is we, so we see that it's all implemented, but we can go here and we can see that there's like a failure. And if we click here, we can read a little bit more about these different failures. So it says, cannot find habit list and scope, cannot find. So what we can do is we can just get these three, take a screenshot. And what I'll do is I'll just bring this over here and say we got these errors in Xcode and basically use it as a troubleshooter, right? So we can do something like that. Let me just make this smaller, adjust this, and I want to see that preview again. And as you can see, it kind of builds in real time, right? does build in real time. We have a content view and this content view is still the same thing. So what we want to do is we want to uh, delete this content view, right? Because we're going to want to have this habit tracking tracker app view. Um, you know, and around 10 minutes in, you're going to keep on getting more and more errors. I keep on getting errors. I am not a, a you know, expert developer here for Swift, but I know how to take screenshots and give them to the AI and kind of understand the reasoning as to why certain things don't work, right? So you can see we're getting more things, multiple commands produce users. So workspace habit tracker, scheme habit tracker, destination, multiple com commands produce something, uh, File name used twice. So there's this one called content view Swift being used twice. So we can go ahead and delete these things. So move these to trash because they're like not necessary. And this can update. This is probably going to go away because we don't really have that. And so we know that what the problem was for this one but there's always going to be other different problems that we have to see. Duplicate output file. Okay. So let me just take a screenshot again and give this to the AI for it to kind of analyze after a few iterating. What you can also do once you have no more errors, you can go up to up here on the top. Can't really see it, but when, when you're on Xcode on the top, there's something called product. And then you can go and click on build, right? Unfortunately, I can't really show you. Let me just take a screenshot to, um, oh, and sorry, it's not build, it's clean. So let me just go again, product, clean test results, right? So it's going to look like this. Oh, whoops. Well, it's up here, product, clean test results, right? So once you do that, it's um, ready to be kind of viewed and previewed so we can see that this previous pause, but if it doesn't work here, we can check on our phones, but it should work here. And once we have that, look, look at this, look how beautiful this looks. So we have habit tracker, today's progress, 
So let me just click on the plus sign. Nothing happens. So, and if I click on this, we can go ahead and see, okay, nothing really happens when I click on the plus sign. So nothing happens when I click on the plus in the app. And I click on the plus to add a new habit in the app. And basically you can go ahead and troubleshoot like this. You have the preview over here and you can go ahead and just report your findings and it can basically generate new things. Obviously there's gonna be errors here and there, but if you're lucky, maybe not. And in case we're lucky, so we can add a habit title. In this case, we can put like gaming, right? Blah, 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 and save this habit. Go to here and start this Pomodoro, right? We obviously have to kind of end the, the Pomodoro too. Uh, we only have a, a, a start and resume. So it's not really great in terms of UX, but basically it's just doing that. You find things, you describe it to cursor, say, um, we need to add a pause button in the uh, Pomodoro time, timer uh, section. So we can do something like that. And again, um, cursor is gonna basically understand that because it has your code base and it's gonna build something based on these best practices from the Apple uh, UI design do's and don'ts and basically build something, right? So we can go ahead and accept that. This is gonna have to reload and then we can add in a new uh, habit, right? Like that, blah, 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 save, go here, start, and okay, now we can pause. Great, and we can reset it, right? So that's basically it in a nutshell. It's, it's so crazy how you can do this nowadays, just build an iOS app. Um, obviously, you need to have a good coding knowledge. As you can see, my, I'm not such an expert in, 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 in Swift programming. Uh, so I couldn't really, I needed to 100% uh, need uh, Cursor's help to help me, right? But um, at the end, it worked. We have some little MVP that we can, you know, use and show on our phones. If you want to put it in your phone, by the way, you can click on this play button and make sure that your phone, uh, the phone setting is set to developer mode on. And then you can basically link this with your, if you have, if you have your, if you have your iCloud account in your phone, it, auto it automatically opens and you have there like a little white um, empty icon where you can test your app out. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, really cool stuff that we can build nowadays. If you have any ideas of what we can build also, uh, please leave that in the comments below. If you want to join our Discord where we do experimental stuff like this, um, basically every single week, uh, make sure to join that. The, uh, the link to that is in the description down below. So thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.